Renee is interviewing Keith Lee. Oh my God, this segment. All these <laughs> segments, dude. You're going to say that a lot, I think. God. She wants to know if there's any info between himself and Swerve before he can really answer Shane Taylor debuts. Now listen, I love Shane Taylor. Mm-hmm. I know who Shane Taylor is. Yes. I have had Shane Taylor on the show. I remember his team with Keith Lee. I remember them breaking up. I remember them going their separate ways. I know everything there is to know about this storyline. I still watched this and went, what? And then he shows up and he says, I want a tag team match at Final Battle. Shane T and J.D. Griffey. Now, knowing all I know about Shane Taylor, Mm -hmm. Keith Lee, I have no earthly idea who J.D. Griffey is. None whatsoever. And then, and then, they walk away, they walk away, and Swerve shows up standing behind Keith Lee, smiling. And Renee nods, and Keith Lee turns around, there's Swerve. And he goes, ah! He actually said, oh my God. Oh my God, he says. And then there's a pause, and he goes, can I rely on you? And I thought, no, you can't rely on him. Why are you out? Why are you even asking? And then he walks off and I thought, what in the absolute name of God did I just see right there? Keith Lee is going to trust Swerve again? No, he's not. No, I will not allow it. They've literally been breaking up since. I will not allow him to trust this man again. All right. All right. Where to begin? Uh, Sh- Shane Taylor shows up, and I, like you, Brian, I knew exactly who he was. He was a great tag team with Keith Lee and Ring of Honor. Had an awesome feud against the men now known as the Viking Raiders. But uh, he shows up, and Renee says, oh, former Ring of Honor television champion Shane Taylor. I thought, you know, I know that's true, but it seems far more relevant to this little scene that he's Keith Lee's former tag team partner. Yes. So she didn't bring it up. Uh, Shane did. It says they still have unfinished business. They should settle it at a final battle. Yes, Shane T. and J.D. Griffey. I can't name all of Ken Griffey Jr.'s children. I know there's one named Trey. I think it's, I think it would be a, uh, George Kenneth III. But uh, maybe this is – that's my best guess. Uh, an unrelated – or a related Griffey uh, member who failed in baseball and is now turning to pro wrestling. That's all I can tell you about J.D. Griffey. And I bet I'm wrong. I bet I'm wrong about that. You know, I haven't watched any of the uh, J.D. Griffey stuff, so I, I couldn't tell you if this would even. But here's what I thought. Here's what I thought when I watched this. I thought, you know what? Can we have a double, a double Horseman beatdown? <laughs> so the bell rings, and Keith Lee and Shane Taylor suddenly just destroy the other two men. And they beat them, and they beat them, and they beat them down, and they pummel them, and they crush them, and they get their revenge on these two men, and then they leave as a team. If that happens, I take back everything I said about this segment. I'm literally looking at a picture of J.D. Griffey right now. Yes. I still don't know who he is. Do you think he may be a baseball player? I don't think he's a baseball player. I think he could be. He could be. Do baseball players wear trunks? Well, I mean, rarely. There's plenty of wrestlers who are baseball players, and they don't play in their trunks. Okay. Anthony Bowens in this next segment here is a baseball player, I think they said. A recap of Preston Vance last week, leaving the Dark Order, breaking the heart of Negative One. Ah, what a dick. Renee brings the acclaimed down to the ring for an in-ring promo. I believe in his entrance rap, Max Caster rhymed anus with Glenn Jacobs. (laughs) Yeah, he did. Okay. He did. (laughs) He kind of pulled it off because he's really good at his job. Better than I could, obviously. Yeah, if you would have read this on the Granny Show, we would have ridiculed you. I didn't write it. He made it work. (laughs) We ridicule you for the way that you read it, Vinny, because you're no Max Caster. I certainly know Max Caster. That's, That's very true. Uh, Bowens is very upset that Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal interrupted their scissoring. But you can't cut in line, they say. You can't just cut in line to get a title shot. There's another team that has been waiting a long time for a shot at these. The crowd chants FTR, FTR, but the gun club interrupts instead. And then Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal interrupt. And they're going back and forth. Sanjay says they're going to beat Private Party. But actually, it was a reference to the next match. I thought he was talking about the acclaimed and got their name wrong. 
you meant the next match. But uh, regardless, eventually, Daddy Ass clarifies. They said they wanted the best, and FTR comes out, and they shake hands with the acclaimed. And so there you go. They're going to have a match, which I assumed would have been on the ROH pay-per-view in six days. Yeah. But no. As it turns out later, they said it's going to be on Dynamite. I am beyond, beyond baffled here, okay? The funny thing is, if this would have happened in WWE, I would have thought nothing of it. Because I would think, well, you know, you're going to have everybody run in, and you'll do a bullshit finish, and you'll lead to a match. But this is not WWE, it's AEW. So it sounds to me like we're doing a world tag team title match on Dynamite, and one team is going to win. Which begs the question, we just had full gear two weeks ago, and you did not do this match. We have final battle on Saturday, and you are not doing this match. You are doing this match, not even with a week's build. They did not announce this last week on Dynamite. They announced it on this show that 450,000 people probably watched, that they are just going to do the acclaimed and FTR for the titles, for the AEW Tag Team titles on Dynamite on Wednesday. This sounds like hot shotting. <laughs> this sounds like the very definition of hot shotting a match on Dynamite because the show did not do very well this past Wednesday. I don't like hot shotting. Juice Robinson calls out Samoa Joe for the Ring of Honor TV title at Final Battle. Okay, I have a question. I thought they were building to Joe and Wardlow. They are. Yes. Okay. That's that's this. I watched this segment and it didn't even hit me till later. Juice Robinson challenged Samoa Joe for final battle. Yeah. I went, what? I have been watching weeks of build for Joe versus Wardlow, including on Dynamite on Wednesday, when he appeared on the big screen and challenged Samoa Joe. Yes. And now we're getting Joe and and Juice Robinson at final battle. And then they announced Joe and Darby for Wednesday. Correct. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to say it again. Okay. I used to watch Raw before Hunter took over because this was a much larger problem when Vince was in charge. And something mind-boggling would occur, and Dave would do the deal where he explains it, okay? And, uh, you know, it, it would, it, you know, and then I would always be like, I don't care why they did it. It was stupid and it doesn't make any go, but this is why they did it. Remember these arguments? We used to have them all the time. Well, listen, I'm sure. I'm sure to Booker Tony Khan that there is a reason that they are doing Joe and Darby on Wednesday. And I'm sure there is a reason that they are doing Joe and Juice at the pay-per-view. Perhaps Joe and Darby are going to have a match and something's going to happen and Wardlow's going to come out and he'll make a challenge for the following Wednesday, whatever. I'm sure there is a reason... In Tony's brain as to why we have Joe and Darby on Wednesday and Joe and Juice at final battle and Wardlow is not getting a match anytime in the foreseeable future. The problem is I don't care if there is a reason it was booked. There needs to be a reason when you watch as a viewer as to why something is happening. I just... Days ago, watched a segment on Dynamite with Wardlow and Joe. I saw another segment a week earlier with Wardlow and Joe, which followed a pay-per-view where Joe won a title from Wardlow by beating someone who was not Wardlow. That's three straight weeks. And then on Friday, out of the blue... I am told Joe will be facing Juice Robinson at the pay-per-view, and Joe will be facing Darby Allen on Dynamite. As a viewer, I say, why the fuck are any of these matches happening? Where is Wardlow? I thought it was his world. Why is he not getting a fucking title match? I don't know. So I don't know what the fuck's going on. Again, with this segment. 
Remember in like 2005 and 2006 when we would watch some Ring of Honor shows and then put on some MLW shows or some FIP shows and it was like the exact same crew but doing totally different matches and angles and storylines and all that? This kind of feels like that, except it's the same show. I'm watching it. It's like those two Samoa Joes. There's Ring of Honor TV champion Samoa Joe and TNT champion Samoa Joe, and they're not the same person. And they're doing different things in different programs. And this doesn't even get into Darby and, and Wardlow. We'll get into all that. But yes, it's perplexing. It's very perplexing. Granny, let's do the wrestling report. What do you got today? Put your laughing gear on. <laughs> My laughing gear. <laughs> <laughs> what is uh, wrestle uh, load? <laughs> <laughs> and Brian Hawks. <laughs> I, I don't. That's what Vinny got paid after his show. I don't. I don't know what wrestle load is. <laughs> oh wait a minute! It's wrestle Cade. Oh, oh well, that good. makes more sense. Where'd Brian go? <laughs> he's recuperating. He's he's broken. You broke him, Granny. <laughs> Sheesh! I've okay. never. I have. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.